O God, be gracious to me, a sinner, and have mercy on me. Blessed is our God, now and always, and forever and ever. Amen. In peace, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For heavenly peace and the salvation of our souls, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy for peace in the whole world and stability of the holy churches of God and for the unity of all. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. Remembering our most holy, pure, blessed and glorious Lady, the Theotokos, and our Virgin Mary with all the saints, let us commend ourselves and one another and our whole life to Christ our God. To you, Lord, for all glory, honor, and worship are you do, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, now and forever, and to the ages of ages. Amen. Hello, dear brothers and sisters. Today's Gospel is again from St. Matthew. This is the Sunday Gospel. I would like to bring your attention to something very important that happened in this Gospel as our Lord and Savior traveled on a boat. He went on a boat onto the other side, which means he went from Israel to the pagan territory, and he got out of the boat near Decapolis and other Gospels we find where there was a demoniac person. In another gospel, we find that there were actually two demoniacs. Perhaps the Lord did this twice, or it's a combination of both. And the demoniac came to him and challenged him and asked him why he's here to torture him ahead of time. And the Lord commanded that the demons come out. And he asked first what the name of the demon was. The demon professed and confessed that their name was Legion and then asked if that's what's going to happen to them, to go into the pigs. There were herds of pigs down the hill. And the Lord pitied on them and did not uh, chase them out and condemn them to wandering aimlessly. They go into pigs and they, the pigs ended up going down the steep hill and drowning themselves in the lake. So this is a dramatic uh, experience, dramatic thing that happens. But what we learn about the demoniac is that he was shackled sometimes by his peers, by his compatriots, and he lived in a cemetery where no one was even brave enough to go by because of his fierceness. And essentially, basically, he was isolated from all of his friends. What we are is dependent on the environment in which we are. Most importantly, the social interactions that we have. Other people have a lot of influence on us. So we are a product of the environment in which we live. The people we relate to shape to a degree who we are. And we also have the counter effect on others because who we are affects other people. Now, our reaction to people can be one way or the other. Nevertheless, there are things that we cannot control. There are changes in our hearts that happen that happens unnoticeably. And so what I'm trying to say here is that when we are cut off from the society, then we, in a sense, have very difficult time sustaining who we are. Because as social creatures, we relate to one another and we shape each other in that way. We're almost like a grinding stone for each other to sharpen each other, to strengthen each other, to encourage each other to grow together. But in this case, this demoniac was separated in the woods, so he was with the dead bodies of people who would be buried. In a sense, symbolizing his spiritual dead inside, he was really nothing left, but those demons had taken over all of his being, and there was legion of them, which is like thousand demons. And so when the Lord cleanses him, now that he is sane, he has come to his senses and the pigs drown themselves the pig herders get shocked and they run and they bring this terrible news and the good news perhaps a little bit of the good news to their copatriots who live in Decapolis and everybody comes out to see now it's this kind of experience we see in the story of the Samaritan woman the Samaritan woman has a conversation with the Lord grows in the process of this conversation 
clarifies things in her life, learns the difference between the living water and the water that she had available to herself. And then she goes and tells Samaritans about her experience. And this is a totally different experience with this Decapolis people, because with the Samaritans' witness, when they come, they say, what you told us made us believe, but now we can see ourselves. So when they come, in the result of a true, honest, clear witness about the kingdom of God and experience that this woman had, personal experience, now they can come and they also experience the same thing. Where on the other hand, on this other story that we have today, they come in a result of careless witnesses. People who just had seen something and they had no understanding of what exactly it was. So they go to the couple, they tell these people, but they are not telling their personal experience. They're not sharing a personal experience or communion with the Lord, but they are sharing artificial, mechanical information that they have observed. And what happens is that they come out and instead of like the Samaritans saying, wow, now we'll believe too as we see the Lord, they approach him and they tell him to leave their country. I jokingly add to this saying that, look what you have done to our economy. Go out of here, we don't want you. So the Lord gets into the boat and starts to go away. And this is the most beautiful part of this gospel. And the demoniac runs after him and says, Lord, can I stay with you? Can I become one of your disciples? So again, you can see the contrast between a person who had communion with the Lord, who had experienced the miracle, who had spoken with the Lord, who had been touched by the Lord, whose heart has been cleansed, versus people who have a mechanical information about the Lord, about the miracle that somebody had from a distance experienced and had communicated in a haphazard way. Their response is total opposite. They want this weird person or this person with, who brought this unknown phenomenon into their territory to just depart. And on the other hand, the one who has experienced the miracle and the communion wants to become a disciple. And that's why the Lord did not send his disciples directly to the pagan, but he sent them first to the lost ship of Israel because they already had some kind of communion with God. They at least knew of God that they were worshiping. And it would be easier for his disciples to be accepted and in this story, we see that the pagans at first did not even accept him. They simply asked him to leave. However, the door wasn't closed for the pagans, where in this story, the Lord asks the demoniac not to go with him, not to become his disciples following him into Israel, but go and tell your family what happened to you. In other words, he is creating another disciple like the Samaritan woman. A Samaritan woman had experienced the same way as this demoniac has experienced the communion with Christ. And as the Samaritan woman went and told the Samaritans, and that was a successful outreach, same way here, this demoniac's outreach would be successful since now he is clean and since now he can firsthand witness about the love of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ for all of humanity. What he had experienced would be a saving process. There would be the Word of God to those who hear it. And if they chose to keep it, they would also experience the same thing as all the Samaritans coming out. They would also believe in him. In this case, they would believe without even seeing him. Thank you. God bless you. I'll see you next time.